so today's tutorial is going to be slightly different. Um, I am going to be bringing you this whole look, but I'm going to try and gear the video more towards long wear makeup and how to make sure your makeup stays on all day and all night, you know, because party season is coming, we're going to be going out, eating loads, dancing, and you don't want your makeup to just, like, sliding off. You just nobody wants that so I am gonna be talking quite a lot the video is gonna be quite long so if that isn't really your thing I understand but if you do have an issue with you know your makeup getting really oily really cakey or just not staying where you want it then I'm gonna give you quite a few little tips and tricks that you can use so if that is what you want then please keep watching also I have to apologize for the lighting situation Normally I kind of have to rely on natural lighting because I don't have like a proper camera set up and everything but it has kind of got progressively darker while I've been filming this video and I have to rely on the light in my room which just it just doesn't rate my life like at all. None of the lighting in my house. It's just not cute. It's just really unflattering so apologies if you can't see everything that I'm doing really well. I'm going to try and talk you through step by step everything that I'm doing so hopefully that will kind of inter counteract and you'll still be able to find this quite helpful and you'll learn quite a bit so yeah i hope you enjoy this video please like comment subscribe share all of that jazz okay so as with any makeup look that you do you need to start with a clean and fresh base before you put any products on your face you need to make sure that your face is clean and moisturized. I know a lot of people with oily skin tend to try to avoid moisturizers because they feel like, oh, my skin's already oily, why would I want to add more moisture? But the thing is, that's actually extremely contradictory and it's going to have the opposite effect because your skin is going to end up producing more oil to compensate for the moisture that isn't there. So you still want to use a moisturizer, just use something light, doesn't have to be anything too heavy. So that way your skin is not going to be producing more oil because it thinks it's too dry. Obviously, if you have dry skin, you can use a heavier moisturizer. The two moisturizers that I like for more of a daily basis, I use this Body Shop one. It's the Vitamin E Moisture Cream. It's just a day cream, very lightweight. And if I'm traveling, I use this simple Kind to Skin Hydrating Light Moisturizer. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy these specific creams or anything like that. If you have a cream that you like and it works for you, just stick with that. The first product that you need to put on your face before you even think about foundation, concealer, anything is primer. Primer is key, it's so important. Um, because what it's going to do is going to create a nice smooth base for the foundation to stick to, which means it's going to last even longer. And also, it creates a barrier between your makeup and your skin so that your your pores don't get so clogged. And there are so many different primers out there for so many different ty skin types. So if you have dry skin, you can get a moisturising primer. If you want a more glowy finish, you can get ones with you know shimmers and things like that in it. If you have enlarged pores, which a lot of people with oily skin do have, you can get pore filling primers obviously I like a mattifying primer because as I said I have oily skin so these are the two primers that I'm going to be using this is the soap and glory one heck of a block primer which is a pore filling primer it's supposed to be a dupe for the benefit professional which I've heard is amazing for pores but I ain't got that kind of money um, and for the rest of my face I'm going to use the Rimmel stay matte which is again just amazing for oily skin. Um, I like to use this when I'm doing really long wear makeup. For more day to day, I like the L'Oreal Infallible or the NYX Shine Killer. With this primer, I'm also gonna mix in a drop of Inglot Duraline. This can also be used as a primer by itself. It's a silicone based oil. So the silicone is gonna create an extra barrier to stop all those oils coming through. And because it's an oil, it's gonna try and, it's gonna keep your face nice and moisturized. So I'm gonna start with the Soap and Glory and I'm just gonna take a drop on my middle finger. I don't need too much because you don't need to put this all over your face, just in the areas you have in large pores. So I'm gonna take that on my fingers and just rub it on my cheeks because that's where I get enlarged pores the most. Making sure I rub it in properly. And then once it's rubbed in, you actually wanna take your fingers and press, press it in to make sure it properly gets into those pores and fills them up so when you put your foundation on, you have a nice smooth base. So now I have a dollop of the Rimmel Stay Matte Primer on the back of my hand and I'm just gonna take literally a drop just one drop 
of Inglot Duraline just in there just to add that extra little bit of priminess if that's a word just mix it together and rub it all over the rest of my face you don't want to use too much primer so if you've covered your whole face and you you know you've still got a lot of primer left over don't feel like you need to pack it on just to use it up because it's actually it's not going to have any more effect and obviously the less product that you're putting on your face the less cakey it's going to look some people might find this a little bit strange but I actually like to go in with concealer and do my highlighting and contouring before my foundation. I just like to do this because I feel like putting the foundation on top of it, it's still going to be striking but it's going to look a lot more natural because there aren't going to be any lines or anything like that. But obviously this is just personal preference, if you already have a way that you like to do it and it works for you, go for it, this is just how I like to do it. So I'm going to first start with my lighter shade, this is the shade Fawn, if it wants to come out, so it's being hormonal today, I'm just put that under my eyes not too much because as i said before if you're putting too much product in your face that's how it's going to look cakey with makeup it's all about going in in just very thin layers i'm also going to put a bit on my forehead just because this is like a very glam look so i want to be highlighted to the guards a bit more because i don't listen to myself then I'm going to take this darker shade, this is Mahogany, I've used this in all of my videos I think. This is my contour shade that I like to use. Um, put the hollows of my cheeks, draw a line, bring it slightly up, do the same on the other side. And then I'm just going to blend this out with a Real Technique sponge. So I take my sponge on the pointed side and go in and blend out the under eye. A good technique that I also do like to use is if you put the concealer on and just leave it to sit, not for long, literally just like 30 seconds to a minute, so that it starts to dry down and then you blend it out, that's actually going to provide a lot more coverage. So if that is the kind of look that you go for, you have a lot of dark circles or you just really want a bright under eye, that is a technique that you can use. But obviously right now, because I've blended it in quite soon, it's going to give me more sheer coverage, which is generally what I go for anyway. So now what I'm going to do is pinch the sponge so that it's thinner um, and creates a line. And then I'm going to blend out the contour. And the reason I pinch the sponge like this is so that it doesn't blend out into a really wide space and it looks really obvious. So I blended that out and I've also gone ahead and primed my eyelids because eyes is what we're going to go in with next. I use the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. I'm going to set my eyes and my concealer and I'm also going to set the areas of my face that get the most oily. I'm going to set the primer and this is, this is an amazing technique for oily skin if you want to make your makeup last because what it's going to do is going to provide that first barrier for the oils to get through because that powder is going to absorb all of the oils. So I'm going to use the Rimmel Stay Matte Translucent Powder. Um, the reason I generally tend to like using this powder under my foundation is because although it is an amazing powder for setting and keeping you matte, for people with darker skin, it can leave a white cast. So that's why I don't use it to set my makeup on top of foundation, only underneath. So I'm just gonna set my contour, my concealer, my eyes, forehead. I'm gonna do my entire forehead because that is the area that I get the most oily. And as instead of using a brush, I'm pressing the powder in and that's going to just make it so much more effective. I'm also going to set my cheeks where I have those enlarged pores and again using that pressing motion is going to close the pores up even more. So when I go in with the foundation it's perfectly smooth, airbrushed and just gorgeousness. Moving on to the eyes, I want to do like a really bold smoky eye so I want you know angles to be perfect. So I have some tape on the back of my hand here. I'm pretty sure this is like medical tape so perfect for use on the face um, and I've just put it on the back of my hand here and I'm gonna go just go like this a few times 
to get off the excess glue so that when I put it on my face and peel it off it's not you know pulling at my skin too much and pulling out my hairs so I'm going to apply it to my eyes at the angle that I want it and stick it down and when I attempt to do the second eye I'm gonna try and get the angles the same but who knows if I will succeed. For the first shades I'm going to be going in with, my transition shades, are going to be from this palette. This is the Makeup Revolution Ultra Eye Contour Lighting Shade. It's a very long name. It's basically supposed to be a dupe for the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. But obviously no one's got that kind of money. So I'm going to go in with this warm brown shade and mix it in with this slightly deeper brown shade. Just because that warm one's slightly too red for what I'm going for. Mix the two tap off the excess and just go into my crease all the way up to the edge of that tape and right down into the inner corner and I do want this to be quite smoky and blended you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this eye completely off camera and then I'm gonna come back that's gonna be smart. All right, I am back. This eye is on. I was not able to get the camera back into the right place, but let us continue. So yeah, these two shades, this red brown and this slightly cooler brown, pop that into the crease. And the reason I'm using a warmer brown in my crease is just so that it kind of juxtaposes the darkness because um, if the whole eye is a bit too cool toned it might just wash out your face a little bit um, and then I'm just gonna take the brush that actually comes with the palette which is actually a very good brush surprisingly because most of the time brushes that comes with palettes are just absolute shit um, this is a two side one so I'm gonna take this fluffy side and just blend out the top of this so it's nice and seamless perfect now I'm going to take this slightly smaller fluffy brush and go in with this dark brown shade here which is next to the red brown in the palette um, and just use that to slightly intensify the crease and this is going to start adding the darkness and the coolness so that when I go in with the black it's not too harsh against that red brown. So now I'm going to take the Maybelline Gel Liner in black and I'm just going to apply this all over my eyelid as a base for when I apply the black so that it has something to stick to, it stays in place and it's really intense. And I'm just going to take it on this big brush, who knows what this is actually meant for but I'm just going to use it for this. And I'm not really trying to be too precise with this because we're going to blend it out and go over it with eyeshadows anyway, it's just to kind of create it. A guideline and something for the shadows to stick to. So although the palette we were just using does have a black in it, it's not as intense as I would like for this look. So I'm going to take the shade Wanted from the Too Faced Power of Makeup palette, which is a black. It's just really deep and pigmented, blends out so nicely. I'm going to take it on this fluffy brush and go into the crease. I'm not doing this too heavy handedly. As you can see, I'm holding the brush right at the end. By doing that it's gonna help you just blend it out even more because if you're holding it right up here there's gonna be too much pressure it's gonna apply too much pigment at one time so going at the bottom just make sure you're going just with a light hand and it blends out a lot nicer for the lid I wanted something a little bit different from your average smoky eye so I'm gonna take this pigment from Barry M it's just like a really deep black with these beautiful gold glitters in them I don't know if you can see that, I'm just trying to be careful not to spill it everywhere. Um, and I'm actually just going to take that on my finger because as we have that eyeliner base down, it's just going to stick really well and I'm just going to press it onto the lid. So my camera just ran out of memory. Fun times. So yeah, I just finished applying that all over the eyelid and now I'm going to do a wing liner. The thing about me is I hate doing looks like this, like just neutral colors one color smoky eye i find it so so boring like you just open youtube and all your suggestions is like brown smoky eye and nude lip oh, it's just it's so annoying like do something different so whenever i 
do kind of monochromatic looks like this I just I have to add like a graphic liner some glitter some something just to make it a bit more fun so I'm gonna add a bronze wing this is the eyeliner by Rena. I still have not figured out what the name of this brand is but I'm gonna use this to create a wing and I'm just gonna use this mirror because I cannot see shit um, and the good thing about having a the tape there is that I can use that as a guideline to create a really nice sharp wing because obviously this being such a bright colour, if I mess it up, you're going to know about it. So I'm going to start going just straight along my lash line. I don't want it to be too thick because I don't want it to take over the entire eye. And then I'm going to go from the tape and just drag it back onto my lid at the angle that I want it and fill that in and because that you know just wasn't enough for me i'm gonna have to add a little bit more so as you can see here i've just drawn a line for going from my inner corner up into my crease yes at times i am aware that this can just make it look like my eyeshadow has creased but i think it looks cute so i'm gonna do it so i'm just gonna take this little paintbrush i literally got this at the works you get this at any kind of like arts and crafts store and I'm going to take the brush from the eyeliner, just get off a tiny little bit and go right from in the inner corner where the eyeliner stops up and follow my crease line. Just like that. And now the eyelid is done I've removed the tape so I can go on and focus on the lower lash line I'm gonna take this bronze pencil this is just the same one that corresponds with the liquid I used and put that into the waterline and this is gonna brighten up the eye because it can be so over a bit overwhelming to use all of these dark colors it can actually make the eyes look smaller which kind of completes defeats the object of what you're trying to do then I'm gonna take this black and as you can see here, I've actually kind of winged it out at a different angle to what I have here. So I'm going to draw that outline with a pencil instead of going straight in with eyeshadow. So I get it at the angle that I want. So I've drawn the wing out. And then exactly the same way, I'm going to drag it to the lower lash line. And just go across. And now you look like a raccoon. You want to set this with more of that black eyeshadow, any kind of cream or liquid, anything that you want, you want to set it with powder and that is going to make sure that it stays in place and it doesn't move. So I'm just going to use this angled brush, and it's meant to be like an eyeliner or a brow brush or something, and I'm just going to go over the black. Again, it doesn't have to be too precise because we're going to blend it out, it's just to make sure that it's locked in place. Now taking this small pencil brush with that reddish brown shade that we used in the crease just to blend out this black slightly so that it's not too harsh. So I blended that out, I applied mascara and now the last step for the eyes is just to apply lashes. And obviously aside from having a good glue and waiting for the glue to dry, to you know get a bit tacky before you apply the lashes one thing that you need to remember to make sure that the eyelashes stay on is to ensure that they fit. A lot of people don't realise that a lot of times you actually have to trim eyelashes because obviously everyone has different eye shapes, different eye sizes. So not every eyelash is going to fit everyone perfectly. Generally, I don't have an issue with needing to trim my eyelashes. But the eyelashes I'm going in with today, these are the Grand Glamour Lashes from Eyelaw in collaboration with Vegas Ney. These ones tend to be quite long. I've tried a few eyelashes from this line and I've needed to trim all of them. I've never had to trim eyelashes before, before using these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the eyelash off the tray. I mean, how stunning are these? Like really, they're just, they're just gorgeous. Um, and before you apply any glue or anything, you just wanna put it up against your eye to kind of see the fit. So as you can see, it's like, really long so it pokes in my inner corner and if that's happening when you're blinking that's obviously when it's going to start to lift up because it's constantly kind of bashing against your skin there so just take some nail scissors and if you can see in the lashes i'll come a bit closer there's like knots in the band where each kind of little cluster of hairs is it's probably best to trim just in between each one 
So I'm just going to go like here because I don't need to trim off loads. So some on the outer corner and some on the inner corner. You don't kind of want to just go like in the middle like half because then the design of the eyelash is going to be lost. You want to kind of do some on each side so you still get the feel of what the eyelash is supposed to be. So I'm just going to trim a bit on the inner. Measure it against my eyes again. That seems to fit a lot better, but obviously if I needed to trim any more, I would I would do that. So I'm going to go and apply these off camera and then I'll be back. What I'm actually going to do now before I go in with foundation is actually apply setting spray. And I know you're thinking, she's crazy, like setting spray is what goes right at the end. Like, is she, is she like all right in her head? Does she know what she's doing? And it's basically the same concept as setting the primer with powder. What this is going to do, it's going to add that extra layer for the oils to break through. Therefore, the makeup's going to last longer. So I'm just going to apply it a little bit. You don't want your face to be like drenched. Otherwise, the makeup's just not going to stick properly. So just a little bit. This is the L'Oreal Infallible. It doesn't have to be any fancy setting spray. So just a few sprays. Let that dry down completely. Let it sink in. And then go in with your foundation. When I'm doing really glam looks like this. For if I've got, you know, like a big night out planned. I need everything to stay in place. I need to look amazing. I actually like to use three different foundations. I know that sounds so high maintenance. But honestly, mixing foundations is going to be your best friend. So it's kind. Of, I kind of do it in a way to like continue my highlight and contour. So I'm going to go in with the Clinique Chubby in the Nude foundation stick. And this is a shade lighter than what I am. So I'm going to apply this on my under eyes. So I didn't actually realise I hadn't pressed record before I started blending that all in. So I pretty much blended in this whole side and now I'm going to move on to this side. So I've done, I did all the contour first and then I'm going to go in with the rest of it. And what I had said was that although you want everything to blend together, you also kind of want to make sure that you're keeping those lines. So like the contour, the highlight and what's in between so that you've still got that dimension that you've created. And it doesn't all just kind of blend into one colour and like look a hot mess. Honestly, if you want your makeup to stay for any length of time, powder is going to be your best friend. Your best friend. If you think you had a bestie, you've got them saved onto Bay in your phone, like get rid of them. Powder is going to be your best friend. Because what it's going to do is just going to lock all the foundation in place, keep it there. It's not going to move. It's going to absorb the oils and you're just going to look amazing. So I'm going to start with this loose powder and bake my under eyes. I'm taking the flat side of this sponge. Just pack it on there. More is more. And go under the under eyes. Trying not to mess up the eye makeup. And also if you bring it down the bridge of the nose. Because it kind of has a highlighting effect when it does this. It's kind of going to make it look like you've contoured without actually contouring other side I'm also going to bake under my contour and by doing this it's just going to create a nice sharp line and just make me look yes Ooh. and curve it up slightly so it looks a bit more natural because huh. natural is what we're going for here YouTubers be like, I'm just having a sip of my Starbucks wheat free, soy free, dairy free, venti grande chai latte. And I'm like, I'm drinking tap water out of a slushy cup I got from the London Dungeons. This is the brow pencil that I like to use. This is the Soap and Glory 2 in 1 brow archery. So it comes with like a crayon on one end. Um, and the crayon isn't extremely pigmented, which for me is okay because I already have quite thick brows, so I don't like to overfill them in. I don't want it to look unnatural. Um, but if you do like that kind of look, you kind of go quite heavy with the brow pencil and you have an issue with it kind of slipping and sliding and moving about if you're sweating, a key to making sure your eyebrows stay in place is brow gel. Brow gel is going to set your brows and just make sure that the hairs stay where you put them and they do not move you can get tinted brow gels if your brows are quite light and you want them to be a bit darker 
you can get clear ones you can use like clear mascara if you're going for a colored brow if that's your thing a colored mascara but brow gel good investment to set the rest of my face i'm gonna kind of semi bake it which is kind of a very good thing for us oily skin types to do we want to make sure that that powder is like in there it is ingrained in the foundation nothing is moving nothing is getting oily you're gonna stay looking fleeky the whole night so i'm gonna use the soap and glory one heck of a blot powder this stuff is so bomb i'm gonna use the little puff that comes with it i'm just gonna just go straight in like you can see how much i love it i've hit pan um that was that was a bit much um and i'm gonna press it obviously starting at my forehead because as i said that's where i do get the most oily um, nose, chin, cheeks. Again, this pressing motion is going to help to close the pores. And then, yeah, I'm just going to set my whole face, brush away my bake. I think I might have gone a bit heavy because that does not want to come off. And can you see that nice line that it's created? Like, snatched, hunty. I know it does look a little bit crazy right now. It does look a bit powdery, but it is going to settle. And it also is just partially because the lighting in my room does not rate. So, now that we're looking like flat, matte, nothingness, we want to add highlighter so we can glow. And a trick to keeping highlighter in place, as with all things, Start with a wet kind of cream base and then set it with a powder and that's also going to intensify your glow So I'm going to go in with this trio. This is by Model Co. I'm going to go in with this bronze shade I'm just going to use my finger. That's a good thing to use for a cream highlight. I'm just going to Tap it in Just as a guideline for where I want the highlight to be Don't need too much of this because as I said this is just going to be a base for where you're gonna put your actual highlighter. And for this, I am gonna go for something a bit more bronzy. Normally I am, you know, a big fan of the whole colored highlighters like that, Anastasia Moonchild Glow Kit is, is my baby. But today we're going for something a bit more neutral. So this is something I discovered quite recently. This is the Makeup Revolution Vivid Baked Bronzer in Rock On World. I know it says bronzer, but this makes such a bomb highlight for someone who's slightly more melanificated. And it's so pigmented, it's just such a beautiful colour. So I'm going to take a fan brush. Don't even have to go in with that much. I mean, look how pretty that is. Don't even need that much. And I'm just going to... Honestly, the lighting in my room, like, it's not doing justice. Let me see what happens when I turn this light on. Can you see that? Can you see that? That cannot just be me. Like, that is just stunning. Obviously, a bold lip is what creates any, like, glam look, especially in this party season. But it's not cute. It's just not cute when, you know, you put the lipstick on and it starts wearing away in the middle of the night and you just get little, like, flaked hair and you just left with an outline. It's just... It's not cute. So like with the rest of the makeup, the key to kind of keeping your lipstick on is layering. So I'm going to start with this lip primer. I know, who knew lip primer was a thing? I got this in my November Birch Box. This is by OCC. Um, and you don't need a lot of this, just a tiny bit. Also, you want to make sure your lips are moisturised because if they're dry, the lipstick's just going to sink into all those fine lines. You're going to look like a prune. It's going to flake. It's not going to be cute. So I had already put on Vaseline before I started filming. Um, and then I'm going to put literally just the tiniest amount of this primer and apply that to my lips. This also does kind of tingle a little bit, which makes me think that it has some kind of a plumping, plumping effect, which... I don't really feel like I need, but I'm not opposed to it. I'm actually going to do this full lip using very affordable products just to show you that you can keep makeup long wearing and it doesn't have to be expensive. So lining the lips, non-negotiable. This is not negotiable. You need to line your lips because it's going to create a barrier at the edge of the lips 
it's gonna stop the lipstick transferring onto the rest of your makeup if overdrawing is your thing a lip liner is gonna help you get that nice precise line they're just 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 don't fight me you just need to line your lips so now they're lined you want to fill in the entire lip with the pencil if you want long wear liquid lipstick is the way to go this is what they were built for this is their purpose in life so they go on they look like this if you haven't seen a liquid lipstick before they just they look like a lip gloss they go on wet and they just they dry down completely matte once they've dried they're not moving so you want to apply this all over the great thing about liquid lipsticks is you don't need to blot them once they're on they are on if you want to just leave it there with just with the lipstick liquid lipstick that that's fine it's gonna stay if you don't really like that flat matte look or you feel like liquid lipsticks dry out your lips you can then go over the top with a regular lipstick this is also going to help the lipstick lipstick stay on because again it's layers if you have this lipstick on top if that wears off you've got the liquid liquid lipstick underneath if that wears off you've got the lip liner underneath so it's going to take longer for the lipstick to completely wear down to your skin so i'm going to use this lipstick it's slightly a darker red and it has like little gold glitters in it so it's going to add a bit of a shine kind of match the eyes a little bit so i'm just going to apply this not too much though because I am kind of a die-hard liquid lipstick person. So I decided that all of this, you know, this bold eye, this bold lip, it just, just wasn't enough for me. It just wasn't enough. So I've added some glitter in my inner corner. This is Cherry Cordial from Star Crush Minerals. It's like a gold with red glitters in it. So I thought it would tie in with the eye and the lip and I just thought it was really pretty. And this is the finished look. So now it is done. Then you want to go back in with setting spray. And this time, load up. Not so much that it starts dripping down your face because then obviously you've wasted your time. The makeup's just going to leave. But you do want to use quite a lot. So it's like, it creates a mask that's just going to suck all the makeup in and keep it there. Yes. And also, it's going to intensify your glow. And who doesn't want that?